What's up YouTube, Becker again with another video, and today I have to record this video with a little bit of a heavy heart, because my baby hawk, R, has died. Rest in peace, baby hawk R, um, it's dead, it's just dead and I'm not too happy about it. So, what caused the deadness? Why am I making this video? Well... Let's take a look right down in here, if you can see. I don't know if you can see all that meltedness happening right there. But uh, the ESC has burnt up. And it looks like it was this side over here that went. Um, side with the power connector. The power connector melted off. And this most of this corner up in here. Obviously, these are all out. It's got, like charredness back in there i haven't even opened it up yet it's just pretty ridiculous so what i think happened all right so i put these two and a half inch arms on here uh the videos out and i flew it i flew it all day without a problem and i was going out flying yesterday um me and a friend of mine we do some micro flying during the weekdays on tuesdays or wednesdays mostly wednesdays but whatever that's here nor there and i was just kind of checking this thing out and i noticed that the bore was a little loose i guess after flying it the other day these screws right here got a little loose and all i did was just tighten them up right and they're on like these little rubber washers and you can see i haven't touched it you know at all since it burned up now what i think happened is if you look right here now, I did tighten these screws, but I didn't crank them. You know, I just gave them a few turns. What I think happened is this capacitor right here is sitting flush on the board, on the, the carbon frame here. I mean, I flew it, and the only thing I did different was tighten the screws. And if you can see here, this one's pretty much touching too. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much touching to it. It has to be what it was. So, please be warned. If you have one of these guys, just be careful when tightening down this board. Don't go too crazy. Make sure it's not touching the bottom. You know what I mean? Or else you're going to end up with a burnt up uh, baby hawk. So, I'm hoping the VTX is still good. I'm hoping the, the flight controller might still be good. I don't know. You know, I have to take it apart. Camera, hopefully, is still good. Should be. Oh, that's broken, too, again. And the Foxier Arrow camera broke, but, I mean, all in all, the damn thing flies so good, and I was loving it on these two-and-a-half-inch props, but now it's dead, dead in the water. Now it needs a new ESC. All right, so I'm jumping here in the video, and I, and I was just going to do just a, you know, hey, warning, don't squash the... 401 ESC to the carbon frame uh, because that's going to blow up your your ESC and you know that still remains true and I actually have a confirmation at this point that that's pretty much definitely what it is because I emailed Pyroflip uh, told them what I thought happened and you know what went on and they emailed me back and they said uh, email Emacs USA because it's probably it's a flaw in the design you're not supposed to tighten the screws you know, that thing is like millimeters away from the frame, and the screws came loose, so I put a couple turns on the screws, and then all of a sudden the caps are sitting on the frame. I mean, you know, I'm not new at this, but this is something you miss. I mean, there's so many things happening all the time with these little, with these drones. You can't possibly catch everything at all times. So I was a little disappointed at that, but, uh, you know, that's how this stuff goes. So I'll try to email Emacs USA, see what they say. But in the meantime, all right, uh, this thing still it flies really well, so I wanted to fix it All right, and I had an HK or HAK RC 20 amp 41 ESC from another build that I was doing that I had problems with uh, And I had a Maytech F411 if you watch my videos, you know, I've been I have this and I've been You know, I've been trying to get this into a build so I tried to build this on on another build with this Maytech F411 uh, this ESC and some Sunny, Sunny Sky 1106 motors and I had nothing but problems like major vibrations and I couldn't get it right 
So I ditched that. I got a new set of motors. That didn't work. So I ended up with another whole system on that. So I tried to put this system back on here, and the same thing happened. It had a lot of vibrations, and it was no good. So I didn't know if it was the ESC or this. Uh, and the reason why I went for this instead of just trying to use the flight controller off of the Baby Hawk in the first place is because they have the, it's a pin system that connects into the, you know, there's pins that were sitting on here, and that fell off. And that goes into the bottom of the, of the you know, flight controller, and that connects with pins. And nothing was labeled. So I couldn't really tell what was power, what was ground, what was the motor signals. So I figured, hey, you know, this, this and this is going to be a lot easier to do. So I put this all together. I stripped off the VTX and the, uh, the receiver, this whole thing, and put it on top of this. Had it all put together. Got vibrations. So I... Uh, came to the conclusion that this Maytek F411, and I basically never flew it. I built it, and it's been a problem ever since. You know, it's an F4 board. It has soft mount grommets that were in here. I, I, I don't know. This thing, you know, couldn't ever get it to fly, so that's going to be another separate story in itself. Anyway, the point of, of jump, me jumping in here, try to help you if this happens to you, and because I couldn't find anywhere selling just um, you know the four in one ESC that goes with this, so you're going to be kind of stuck. So this HAK 20 amp ESC has these you know input lines that come off the back. All right, it's power ground motor one two four three is how the you know they come out of the bottom here, and then you got to try to get them onto this pin header right here where it had the pin header you know for the to accept the pins. So I heated that up and took that off and then you're gonna have six pads so on the bottom here it's gonna look like this once you take that pin header off so if you're looking at the bottom it's gonna look like this all right just picture this is the bottom of the flight controller so i can show you all right now if i just just look make sure i get the right ones all right so this side this one is going to be your power the first one on the left is your power. This one is your ground, right? And then I believe it's going to be... Let me just look to make sure. It's hard to remember all that stuff. It's a real pain in the ass. So it's green, blue... Right, so you got the first one's gonna be power, ground, motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. I believe that's how that goes. Right, two and four, yeah. One, two, three, four. So if you really take your time, uh, I might recommend keeping the pin header on here and then you know, cutting the pins short and soldering to the pin header to the like the little pin nubs. Because this was really hard to do. If you cross any of these up, like up here, your motors are going to spin together and it's going to be all out of whack. So, But that's how that is. You got power, ground, one, two, three, four. And then you can kind of get it back, back working, right? So that's pretty much how that is. So you got your power and your input to the board. Um... Going back in, and then your motor, your four motor outputs, and then you'll be back in business. You'll be able to um, connect all this back together. So I actually had this flying yesterday. I just kind of took it back apart to give you to show you um, that it is possible. And then I put the cap here and this out the back, and then I had to drill a hole in the top of this cap, so or the top of this um, the lid here, so the capacitor kind of pokes through. And actually. Is a little better with the capacitor and all tucked into the back. It's going to be a little bit more cleaner and a little bit, um, you know, better. So the other thing, the other quick tip I want to give you, if you burn this out, what you can do, if you ever get in a situation like this <clears throat> and you don't know what's going on down here, all I did was put power in here, right? So I put positive on the positive, negative on the negative, low power, I put five volts into it. And then I took my probes and I tested the front ones. And then once you get a positive voltage, 
and then you reverse them and you get a negative voltage, you know which ones are positive and your negative. And four of them are going to have the same readout, right? So if you keep testing them, put, put this on, a neg on the negative and then keep testing each one, right? Four of them are going to be the same and one of them is going to be different. One of them is going to be a lot higher and that's going to be your positive. And then just double check, you put that on your positive and there and you get a positive voltage. And then if you rotate it, you get a negative reading on your meter. There you go, you found your positive and your negative and then you can mess around with your motor wires and it's a lot safer if you get your motors crossed up no big deal you're not going to short anything out you just got to go back at it and try to try to fix it so let me put this together and i'll show you the finished product all right so we're back together here and yeah we're back up in the air right so you know still a major pain in the ass i Super pissed that this even happened because, you know, I put these two and a half inch arms on here and this thing was flying great. It's, uh, you know, it's powerful enough. It, it's it's fun to fly. It just, what a damn shame that, <clears throat> that that happened. So, what I would suggest, so basically, you know, again, I put this all back together pretty much. The same flight controller, same VTX, same uh, receivers in there. So, basically, you're just replacing the ESC, right? So, you get a 20 by 20 ESC with some wires you know, the wire pad, you know, to come out and you can, you can put this all together. So like I said, I got the cap sticking out here. Everything's coming out the back now. Um, you know, the shell might not fit on perfect. Like I kind of had to bend this a little bit to get it in to get the, all this to fit, but I just used an M3 nut here as a spacer to kind of give me a little more room up here. And then what I would also recommend is to use, let me see if I can show you here. Um, put an m3 nut under here see can you sorry can you see down underneath i've got m3 nut <clears throat> underneath this to give us a little more space from squishing into the bottom plate there so there's plenty of room under there now shouldn't have any problems so put you know same screws that go through the rubber grommets down there but then i just put an m3 nut in between uh the rubber grommet and the form on esc so there you go. Definitely recommend that. And yeah, we're back in action, back in flight. So, you know, warning, do not over tighten your Form 1 ESC on your Baby Hawk R because the caps will sit flat and short out. All right. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.